Hey guys, so when I left you last, we were working on testing and I mentioned these three things that I wanted to do. Um, and so we're gonna be working on those. And the first thing we're gonna set up is basically a new database that we can use for testing. Now this is actually pretty easy with um, type ORM. So we have this thing called ORM config over here, right? And this specifies basically all our information to connect to the database. And if we want another connection, for example, for testing, we can. So what we do is I'm gonna just um, add an array here instead of just an object. And I'm gonna copy this and paste it. And now I just need to add a curly brace and a comma there. And give us save and awesome. So now I have a second connection. So now to differentiate these connections, I have to give them a name. So name, I'm gonna call this one development, and I'm gonna call this one test. And then I can change pretty much anything I want here. So test, I wanna change up so it does a few different things. The first is I don't wanna see logging um, with type ORM whenever I'm testing. The other thing is in my database, I want to call this test at the end. So this is gonna be a totally new database here. And then um, lastly, I wanna drop the database whenever I create a connection. Basically, I wanna reset all the data, get rid of all the data. That was, that was another thing. Um, one of you guys recommended instead of um, dropping all the data at the end to do it at the beginning. And I thought that was a really good idea because then we start fresh and we make sure it's consistent that we have um, an empty database. So we're gonna be doing that. Okay, so here are like the connection options that we have, all the options uh, from type ORM. And I'll link this if you wanna check this out and see all the different things you can do. But the one we're gonna be using is this thing called drop schema. So I'm just gonna copy that and put it in here and we're gonna say true. So now we're gonna drop the database and synchronize it and make sure all our tables are good to go. So I'm gonna to have to create this database. So I'm gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna copy this and just say create DB. Um, if I want to, I could change any other parameters, but I'm gonna keep them the same. I could create a new user, but I'm gonna keep that one the same too. All right, so we're good to go, at least with this connection. So now we basically need to conditionally connect. And what I mean by that is when I do yarn start over here, so in my package.json, uh, I'd like to connect to the regular database. And when I do test, I'd like to start up the uh, test database. So what I'm going to do is create a new command here called um, start, uh, I'm not gonna call it start, we'll call it test server. And it's just going to say ts node source slash index.ts. Now, the way I'm going to know that this is testing is I'm going to pass an environment variable. So I'm just going to set the node environment to test. So this is a way how you can pass an environment variable um, to your code right before it runs. So we now have access to this environment variable and we can basically do different things with it. And I'm also gonna set one up here, node env equal to development. And I'm also gonna set it in test. So node env test. Now I'm, I assume Jess probably sets this um, to the right thing, but just in case, in case it doesn't, I'm gonna set it there. All right, so we're good now. Uh, we just now need to in our, um, whenever we call create connection now, we need to conditionally create different connection, connections. So what I'm gonna do is create a folder called utils. And I'm gonna say create type ORM connection. And let's call this .ts. I'm gonna export const create type ORM connection. And I'm gonna make this asynchronous. So we are going to use this. But now before we actually just call create connection, before it was automatically reading the ORM config, right? And it was able to know which one it was, but now we have multiple. So the way we're gonna solve this is by saying um, connection options. 
and we're going to await connection options. Um, and this is something from Typeform. Oops. I, I, we, I don't think we want the reader. It's uh, connection options. I actually can't even remember the name of this. Um, it's for overriding. So it's in creating a connection, I believe. Um, overriding. So we want to use the get connection options. All right, so get connection options. So we can either manually change these or we can actually pass in uh, the name that we want. So I'm just going to pass in process.env.nodeInv. Okay, so what this is doing is it's grabbing the options based on what the node environment is. And we are just going to return that connection options. And we're just importing both of these from Typeform. Okay, so remember how here we specified development or test. So whenever we're running, whatever environment we are, we're either passing the string test or development. And then if we pass in test, it's going to give us the test connection options. If it gives us development, we're going to be grabbing these and we just pass that in to Typeform so it knows what type connection to build for us. So now anywhere that I use create connection, I'm just going to say um, change it to my own um, connection called create Typeform con. And I'm also going to do that in my register function. So create con Typeform con. And now it's going to drop the databases whenever it creates this one. So I'm going to just do it at the very beginning here. Um, that way when we request this, uh, we don't, we add a user and then we drop the database. I don't want that to happen. Okay, cool. So now we should be um, on every single test dropping the database. Um, and we might not necessarily want to do this. So another way you can do it is uh, here with Jest, they have a couple functions we can use. So we can use their use before each. So this will run before every test or we can use um, before all, which will be run before all tests. So for now, I'm just going to say before all, and we might change this to before each um, in the future. And I'm just going to say async, and I'm just going to remove move it up here. So basically, before I do any tests, what's going to happen is we're going to create the database connection um, and wipe the database um, because we specified in our ORM config that we we're going to drop the schema. All right, um, let's give this a try now and see if this works. So now to start up my server, um, I want to test it. So I'm going to run the yarn test server, yarn test server. And uh, we'll let that boot up. And we can just, and if we want to, notice how we can get any logging. Just do yarn start to make sure that works too. Um, and here we should see logging perfect. So notice how I was able to read different options um, because of we passed in that environment variable. So start that server and then I'm just going to come over here and do yarn test to test it out. And let's make sure it finished starting up. Perfect. And we'll see if this works. Okay, so connection default was not found. So it looks like something went awry. Okay, so I found a, a workaround to this error right here. So it says the connection default was not found. And what I think what's going on there is uh, Typeform uses the default connection when making queries. And when we went over here to ORM config, we changed the name to development and the other one to test. So that was causing a problem because we are feeding it in. So what I did is when I create this connection now, I keep all the options that are there and then I just pass in the name of default and it's now able to run okay. Um, here's the test working and we can just go ahead and test this guy again. So yarn test and it's able to drop all the databases uh, or the database and run again. And I can just control C this, run it again and we'll have no problem with, for example, duplicate users being created because we are dropping the database each time we run it. So that is perfect. 
Um, so that's what I wanted to do in this video. We still have not done this part right here. We're currently starting the server in another tab. So there's two things I wanna try. The first is this library right here. What it does is it starts the server, waits for the URL to finish, or uh, to basically come up, um, and then it'll go ahead and run your test. And then after that, after it's done testing, it'll shut down the server. So this one looks pretty promising. The other one I wanna try out is super test. What super test allows you to do is actually pass in your express object. So see how it says app equal express, and I can just directly pass that in. So instead of actually starting the server up, I would just basically um, use the express object, which has um, some nice benefits. So I'm gonna try this. This is my preferred option. Um, and we'll see if this works with uh, GraphQL uh, Yoga. Um, the downside of this one though, is if we wanted to do this in production, um, and I wanted to just run the test in production, this would be more like how the production tests would happen. Um, I could hit the server, but that might be a separate issue for a different time. But this, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.